What's up, everybody? We're back. Yeah. 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 <sighs> hey, welcome back to a Metalhead's journey. Hey, we're uh, we're back. We're continuing our journey down the top 50 metal records of all time. We've made it to number 11 on the list. We're about to crack into the top 10. It's criminal. It's freaking criminal. I didn't want to cuss too early into the video here. Thank you. <laughs> This album is not in the top 10, top five, top three, but we're here talking about Black Sabbath's Master of Reality. It's the number 11 album on the list here. What a classic record this is. I can't wait to hear everybody's uh, probably sorry opinions. I swear to God, if somebody brings up, if somebody brings up the Friends song, I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> but before, but before Josh, do you have a bucket? That, do you have a bucket, Josh? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I do. Look, look, can we just get it out of the way? Like, would that be fair? Like, if we just get it out of the way, it'll never happen again. Like throughout Correct. the rest of the video. Correct. Yeah, or no? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, dude, dude. I mean, look, I. It's funny. Who cares? And obviously, this song came out first, right? But it is, the same, it is the same chord progression. So, yeah. you know, Jason, you did, you did. I didn't even think of it, but Jason, you fucking ruined it, bro. As soon as you I'm said sorry. it, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. He's well, right. I, was, I was, I was listening to it in the background, <laughs> in the, you know, like I, I try to do a lot of these albums, and I'm like, you know, blah blah blah, and I'm like, clap 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 clap, clap. and I'm like, hey, what the fuck is that? And I'm like, I'll be there for you. Yeah, this is the same fucking song. Hey, look! I mean, if it's it's that iconic, it became part of an iconic show. So, so the clap manifested itself like into existence. Yep. Nice. Okay. All right. I, 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 I'm done. Okay. All right. Well, hey, uh, let's get started with the history of the band here, history of the album, and then we'll jump right into the metal rundown. Um, so, like I said, we're talking about Black Sabbath's Master of Reality. Black Sabbath formed in 1968. We're an English heavy metal band formed in Birmingham. The band was founded by John Ozzy Osbourne, Tony Iommi, Terry Geezer Butler, and Bill Ward. Excuse me. They are often cited as pioneers of heavy metal music, previously known as the Polka Talk Blues Band and Earth. The band settled on the name Black Sabbath. Uh, Black Sabbath have released 19 studio albums, including their most recent album, 13, re released in 2013. The album was the first to feature Ozzy on vocals since 1978's Never Say Die. Uh, they have sold over 70 million records worldwide. They were ranked by MTV as the greatest metal band of all time and placed second on VH1's 100 Greatest Artists of Hard Rock. They've won two Grammy Awards and were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2006. Uh, Master of Reality, released in 1971, is the band's third studio album. It is regarded by some critics as the foundation of doom metal, stoner rock, sludge metal. Um, uh, we saw Iomi and Geezer down their instruments, uh, basically uh, one and a half steps during the production, achieving what, uh, what Iomi eventually called a bigger, heavier sound. Mm -hmm. uh, with Sabbath's first two records, there was a rush to record and release the albums. This was the first album that they were actually afforded time to kind of toy around with the record in the, uh, in the studio, which is why mm -hmm. I think you get a lot better production and a lot more, uh, I think you get more on the record here in terms of like different, different styles of music. Um, a little more experimentation, it seems like. Yeah, you know, yeah. for sure. Uh, this album peaked at number five on the UK charts and peaked at number eight on the US Billboard charts. The album produced one single, Children of the Grave. Mm. All right. Nice. All right. Let's hop into uh, musicality. Who wants to go first? I'll, I'll hop in and uh, I'll make this real easy. I thought the whole fucking band brought it. Um, you know, yeah. the, this, this album is a, is a uh, classic it's a uh it's it's easy to appreciate everything that's going on um at, mostly at any given time in this album um you know I, I guess to be fair i'm gonna go ahead and just highlight geezer butler on this i think that guy fucking rules man yeah uh <clears throat> yeah as far as uh, mu musicality goes i agree with everything adrian said uh i mean <clears throat> all the individuals uh you know i think our, our previous knock uh, on on the pr on the previous record that we did, they're self titled. Uh, you know the three musicians, uh, the three instrument uh, players, uh, kind of took over, and Ozzy was kind of in the background, at least for me. I think Ozzy brought his game on this record uh, more so than he did on their self titled. All all four of these guys were uh, just knocking it out of the park with their instruments. Uh, I agree with Adrian Geezer Butler, easy standout performer. Um, on bass, I mean, doing stuff that, like, 
bass players still don't time. don't do like still don't do yeah. like um which is crazy uh but amazing musicianship all around yeah i i i absolutely agree i'm not going to echo every single thing uh the bass line in almost every song is fantastic uh they they do take some risk and some chances and and for the most part they pay off uh, uh hands down on some of these songs uh very and you can tell like the 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 lower tone uh they got some really chunky just fucking nice riffs uh peppered in through here uh it's 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 very well done from everybody in the band yeah Yeah. i I think the album kind of sounds like they finally figured it out right like we we did their first album a couple weeks ago and there was some shades of this there were some shades of what they were before that right in terms of like maybe more of a blues band i mean there's not a blues track on this record right i mean this is just straight ahead metal i mean look solitude is a little bit of a quieter song right but yeah but it's this is just straight ahead just metal yep um look i feel like it's criminal everybody's talking about geezer on here and look geezer's great but tony i fucking owe me stands out i mean he's the riff master supreme this dude, like the riffs, the leads this guy put out on this record, they're untouchable. This guy is absolutely the MVP of this record for me. Um, jumping into entertainment value quickly here. Um, I Look, I mean, album's a cool 34 minutes and 29 seconds. Uh, I mean, I can, you know, I moved a little bit closer to my job and I can still listen to this whole album before I get to work, um, which is always a good sign, so. That part of it's really good, and dude, I mean, just every song, like no, no song overstays its welcome. You get you get a couple of nice instrumentals in here that kind of give you a nice little segue into some other songs. Dude, I I think that entertainment value on this record is as high as anything else we've had on the re- on the list. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, easy fucking listen, um, and it's it's really just you know you see it eight the sweet numbers eight right for uh, tracks mm-hmm. listing, and there's only really six songs actually. Yeah. And they're, they're for the most part they're pretty strong and even those those two you know minute tracks or a minute and a half tracks that are on the album I mean there's I I like them there there's nothing wrong with them they don't feel like just some bullshit they decided to throw in for fun um they work with where they are um, Yeah yeah and, and I love that uh in this album uh the tone is not all over the place like it is in their debut album uh, they just, you know, it, it's it's a cohesive album, and I feel like the track listing in general is just it's perfect. Yeah. So, so that's a good segue because I actually disagree with that, Adrian. I don't think the track listing is perfect. It, we, specifically, one uh, track. I don't think Sweet Leaf. Like, I think it's completely out of place for me on this record, especially being the first track because. You know, it's 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 an ode to marijuana, and it's the Morgan first track. Yeah. yeah, and it's the first track, and I don't really feel like the rest of the album is like that. Like, at least not that's not the impression that I get, right? Yeah. And so, while I I have nothing against the song "Sweet Leaf" specifically, like taken in a vacuum, I don't like it being the first track on the album. Uh, I think they're. I think- Go ahead. I was gonna say if I, if I had to guess, I would say they probably just like the coughing effect at the front. Just to kind of start the record as something different and unique. Sure, um, but I mean, what, what would be your what would be the one you'd replace it with? Um, that's really hard to say on the spot, but uh, I mean, it'd be hard not to like start the em- the album off with "Embryo into Children of the Grave." Um, I think that would be just like that that kind of cold open with just the clean guitar would be an excellent way to start the record, but. I, I don't think you start. I don't think you start the record off that strong, uh, personally. Uh, look, look, look. We're, we're getting ahead of ourselves on that, but I, I just, as far as like uh, that, that would be just one area where I would agree as far or disagree as far as the tone and stuff. But as far as entertainment value, I mean, look, thirty-four minutes. It's an it's, it's super easy. That, that that's not to say that we only like short records, right? But it's just. Mm. It's that well, these guys, whatever, wherever they are, uh, but uh, it's it's an easy listen. None of the songs you want to drag; they like feel like a drag. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, no skippers. So my entertainment value was was pretty high. 
Yeah, I'll go next. Uh, I agree with Dave. Uh, there's uh, uh, there's only one skipper for me, uh, but even then, if I just have it on the background, I'm not going to skip it. So uh, entertainment value is pretty high. I like most of the tracks that's on here. Uh, a few of them I really, really do like a lot, uh, and it's and it's uh, it 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 makes for good music. Like I said, it's it's what you want playing in the background when you're doing something else, and this is your style. This is your jam. The fact that you think this album has a skipper on it just makes me disgusted. But hey, while we're here, go ahead and give us your uh, give us your top tracks. Uh, oh, okay, I can bring them now. Yeah, my, yep. my my top tracks: number three, uh, "Lord of This World." Uh, let's see, number two would be "Solitude," and number one, hands down, "Children of the Grave." Nice. Yeah, interesting. Solitude, huh? Oh man, that's okay. So. You know, Dave was saying like none of these. So songs wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. What song are you skipping? Oh yeah, I was oh, curious about that too. It's the Friends song, After Forever. <laughs> hey, we weren't supposed to bring that up. I mean, it's After <laughs> Forever. No, I, I just I didn't really care for the song uh, the first couple of times through, and then I can't, I started getting that click for that other shit. Anyway, no, Solitude is one song that I actually wish was longer. I feel mm. like. It is a an epic uh, song that, that should have been like say seven or eight minutes long. I really do, and look, like, uh, never in a million years did I think that was Ozzy singing that song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll pop in. I'll pop in. Uh, number three for me is going to be Sweet Leaf. I think that song's a fucking banger, uh, especially that main riff. Um, number two is going to be Children of the Grave, and number one is going to be Solitude. That is a fucking banger. Uh, I, I, uh, I legitimately love that song. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go next. I'll let Josh bring us home. Uh, <clears throat> for me, it's, uh, into the void is number three. Uh, it's going to be, uh, what's the song? Lord of this world. Number two. I think that song is really, really good. Uh, and you know, uh, this small pet peeve. There's no reason Embryo should be its own track. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's 28 seconds. Just tack that onto Children of the Grave and make it one track. Like it's what? Well, there's yeah, but they learned their lesson from the first album doing that shit. Well, yeah. dude, that that's that, <laughs> it's literally goes into the song. It's not a separate Look, when, song. When they play a, when they play Children of the Grave live, they play Embryo before it. So oh it's, yeah, it, it's it's part of the song. I don't even yeah. count it I as agree. separate. Uh, but to me, it's clearly Children of the Grave. I think that's the strongest song on the record. If I have to skip a song, and I don't, but if I have to skip a song, it's just Sweet Leaf. And again, the only reason is is because like, if I don't feel like listening to a song about weed, then I'll just skip it and go straight into After Forever because that song is a banger. Jason's dumb. Uh, that song is a banger. But I do, I do agree with the Solitude Love. That was my number four. Solitude's very good. Oh. All right. Well, I do have a couple of uh, honorable mentions here. Uh, I've got uh, Children of the Grave. Out of Order six of songs. World, Solitude, Orchid, and, uh, yeah, you know, whatever, the yeah, embryo. Um, so for me, my top three here. Number three is Sweet Leaf. Uh, just a great song, great riff. Uh, number two, After Forever. Uh, dude, this song is just, it's a fucking headbanger, man. They played it live once. So fucking good. The bass and on that number, part, dude. Yeah. yeah. Number one. I do, I do like and, the opening section. Yeah. <laughs> number one. And I mean, just the just the absolute best Black Sabbath song ever written is Into the Void. This, this song is unfucking stoppable. The intro riff is so good. The main little uh, verse riff, just just a just a good little fucking headbanger. Um, nice bridge with it. You get that traditional Black Sabbath bridge that goes into like this nice little more up tempo riff. Um, I mean, that's like everything. Like, look, I, I'm not saying I would show that to somebody and say, This is the Black Sabbath you should check out, but I think it's the best song they've ever written, personally. All right, so uh, jumping in here to audio production. So, the, the uh, record was produced by a gentleman named Roger Bain, same guy who did the first two records. Um, this is actually the last record he would produce for the band as Tony Iommi would take over uh, all the production going forward. Okay, uh, I had no issues with the production. Um, I I owned the CD like way back before we it was like re remastered or whatever, uh, and this sounds 
like you know as far as i can tell the same so i mean the production's very good you can hear all the instruments very clear um uh, nothing negative to say very solid production yeah no for 1971 i mean you know well you couldn't ask for better yeah yeah i 100 percent agree like uh the 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 way that the, the the audio production for this album is set up and it's it's this fucking album is older than me uh it sounds it sounds great uh, every yeah. single instrument is is easy to decipher, especially the bass line. Oh, I love uh, Butler's bass album. sound. I wish more yeah, yeah. more people like had the balls to have their bass like that high in the mix, but they, most people aren't very good. So, well, oh, they just don't they 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 just don't give the uh, the freedom to play uh, within the the song itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, Geezer's a big part of the band. I mean, he's also the main lyric writer. So yeah, you know. He's like, I, I think, you know, he's allowed to kind of do that because he's the guy that also writes the lyrics, right? So uh, I think he gets a little bit more carte blanche. I, I will say this, uh, part of the reason why I like Children of the Grave so much is the bass, I mean, not the bass, the, the drum effects. Apparently they mic'd up, I guess, every section and recorded it separately so they can get that, uh, that sound that you hear. So you don't get mm. that sound when you listen to it live. But I think it's... A, it's something that I've never heard anybody else do. And if I, you know, I'm sure that it's, it's out there somewhere in the world, but uh, I just think it's, it's really unique and it really sets that song apart. Yeah. There's a funny, uh, funny story. I, well, I don't know if it's funny, but Tony Omi's talking about the, uh, the making of the record, the production of the record. And he felt like, cause this is the first time, like I said, that they had a chance to slow down and actually spend some time like making the record in the studio. And he's actually lamenting it uh, in an interview, saying that he wishes they could just go back and make records like the first two and just show up, bang them out live and go. He doesn't like the fact that like they're in there and like tweaking on it, working on it. Ozzy's able to take like a bunch of time trying to work on it. And he referenced Into the Void in particular as being like the most difficult song to record on there that Bill Ward was just having like the hardest time trying to get the drum parts right. They had to go to, they ended up having to go to like multiple studios to get the right sound to record Bill Ward. And he's just like, he's like, man, that's ridiculous. But, <laughs> but look, it came out great. It's the best song you ever wrote. Yep. So what are you going to do? All right. Hey, we've arrived to the final section here. Legacy. This is where we like to give our, our metal rating for the album. Just to give you guys some context here on the way we rate our album. So for us, oh, excuse me, for a lot of other people, a seven would be an average score. Um, for us, our average score would be about a five. So if we give an album anything a five or above, that's various levels of we would recommend you listen to that record. Anything 4.9 and down is various levels of you should never listen to that record. Yep. So and, uh, I'm going to give my score last because you guys are going to make me want to vomit, I'm sure. Yeah, it gives you time to change it, to buffer it. Yeah, the, the slide. Uh, I'll there. send you a picture of my score right now. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, look, I'll, I'll go first. Uh, because I think I'm going to have probably one of the lower scores. Uh, while I do, uh, I did praise this record, and I do praise this record. I think it is, I, I think it is very good. But I, I unfortunately think this record is just shy of being truly great for me. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, it, it's just, again, it just, it's just like. For me, the the great the the great songs, my three favorite songs on the record, are just far better than the the rest of the the other three songs that are on the record. So, um, but I think this is a huge improvement over their self titled. Uh, I'm giving this a seven point eight. Mm. All right, I'll, I'll go, go ahead next. and go. No, okay, go for go it, ahead. Jason. Okay, I will. Uh, yeah. I, this is a very good album. Um, <laughs> It is a, a marked improvement over the self-titled album. Uh, but I'm going to agree with Dave in some of his sentiments. Uh, this uh, album is carried, in my opinion, by the two songs that I think are the best. Uh, and all the rest are good songs. Uh, I gave this a 7.0. Right on. All right, so... Um... Hey, look, I, I honestly think you guys are giving this a giving this album pretty good scores, like way better than I thought. I straight up gave this a seven point five. I think this is a uh, a a really 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 good album. 
But, uh, um, you know, th- th- that's where I'm at with it. I think it's an improvement from from uh, their debut. Uh, definitely uh, a step or 25 from the album before it. But, you know, we'll get there. Hey, listen. Uh, I love Black Sabbath, one of my favorite bands of all time. This is their best record uh, that they've ever come out with. I love this record. I've been listening to this record for 20 plus years. Um, I was so happy to, you know, finally get an opportunity to talk about the record here. And, you know, you guys just consistently let me down. And it's just, it's, it's really, it's just, it's more insulting than anything else. Like, I, I just don't understand why you guys like don't love like, like great metal. I don't get it. Uh, this is this album is criminally underrated. It should not be 11 on this list. It should be much more near the top of the list here. Um, look, maybe it's just nostalgia and I'm biased, whatever. I'm giving this record a 9.8. All right. Wow. This okay. is one of my favorite records of all time. Okay. Look, look, hey, look. I, I respect it. We can't, we can't argue the fact of, of what it means to you. So if the score is what it is. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I've I'm been a, listening to guys, this album. You guys for, disgust me. I'm, I'm assuming we all think it belongs on the list, right? Oh yes. Uh, and, yes. and there, there's there's so much in this album that you hear other bands doing later down the road, even modern bands. Yeah, and and obviously we're all going to listen to more Black Sabbath. You know, it, it's this is good. Yeah. This is a good record. Uh, so look, look, Josh. Uh, this is a good score. It's considered an A tier score for us, which is very good. This is an eight point zero three, which is a very good score. That is that is that is better than the vast majority of the albums on this list. Like so, when when we get to the end of this list, there's a chance that this will be in the top five. Uh, no, but no. No, but no. it's it's no. in the top. It's actually number five right now. Right now, See? it's got a chance because look, I know, I've seen some of the other albums coming up. I'm not gonna get over a seven. Look, I would like to change my scores on the three death records that are on this uh, <laughs> on this list. I would like to give them each a 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> right. instead, yeah, so. instead of giving them a real score, unlike you guys, you can't score something like actually. It's disgusting. Well, hey, I hope you guys liked the review here. I loved it. If you did, go ahead and give us a like. Give us a subscribe. We're putting out weekly metal content. We got metal reactions, metal reviews. Uh, metal time time machines, machine. all kinds of cool shit. So, hey, in the meantime, live long and prosper. We're jumping to the net top 10 next week. Take it easy, everybody. See you. Later.